Hello, I'm Bob Marshak, and I'm delighted to be able to share in this short video my thoughts on making sense of organization development. I also wish to send special greetings to the delegates to the 7th Asia OD Summit being held in Singapore this October 2012. To help make sense of organization development in today's world, I believe it's important to understand current practices in terms of how they have developed in their historical context. In other words, to understand the lineage of ideas that have shaped OD over the years. To do so, let me draw on some ancient wisdom coming from Confucian and Taoist traditions. In the Confucian tradition, the great learning says, things have their roots and branches, affairs have their beginnings and their ends. To know what is first and what is last will lead one near the way. This tells us that the important aspect of today is shaped by the past, and the past is understood in the context of today. In the Taoist tradition, the Tao Te Ching said, the Tao produced the one, the one produced the two, the two produced the three, and the three produced the 10,000 things. Here we begin to understand how what we see today, the many blossoms of organization development and its many manifestations, all get linked back to some original core principles. So broadly speaking, if we want to make sense of OD, to know the way of OD, it's helpful to know its roots and branches and how its beginnings have led to the many manifestations we see today. Broadly speaking, OD had its roots in the 1940s and 50s. Its foundations established in the 1960s and 70s. Significant branches emerged in the 1980s and 90s, and we are experiencing the blossoming of the 10,000 OD things today. So let's take a look at the roots for a moment. The roots of OD are directly traceable to the thinking of the German social psychologist Kurt Lewin, who emigrated to the United States in the 1930s to escape Nazi Germany. Lewin in the 1940s set forth a number of interrelated values, premises, and practices that I will call the three beginnings, which are still the fundamental roots of all or most all OD practices to this very day. These include, in terms of values, the steadfast belief in a few core values to shape all change work in human systems. This included, importantly, and primarily a belief in democracy, a belief in the positive potential of people, and a belief of the use of scientific rationality to address social issues. In terms of premises or theories, a second beginning were two core premises that guided his approach to change. One premise was his field theory that postulated that all behavior is a function of, of a set of internal and external forces operating on a situation, and that to change behavior, you need to change the field of forces. The second core premise was the primacy of small groups in the change pr process, that the target of change was not just the individual as an isolated entity, but instead behavior in the context of a small group. This also included the notion that small, small groups had their own needs, such as leadership, norms, decision making, working through conflict, and that these needs should be attended to in the change process. In terms of practices, the third beginning was two practices that he advocated as central concerns of any change process. One was the use of action research, wherein members of a social system are involved in the investigation of their own situation, their own field of forces, and were asked to then develop their own potential changes. These were then tried out and further studied and modified as necessary in a continuous iterative process of investigation, experimentation, and learning. Thus, the notion of democracy was also extended to the diagnostic and change planning processes. This differs from other change approaches where these steps were usually performed by an elite or expert group or individual. The second practice related to change was his recognition that changes needed to be sustainable that change were not lasting and they could revert back to old behavior relatively easily. Thus his famous conception that change included unfreezing, movement, but then importantly rephrasing a social system. This was the way to achieve sustainability and he built it into his fundamental premise of initiating change but always with an insight towards sustaining change at the end. 
This also related to his research that found that changes adopted in a group context were more likely to be sustained than in an individual context. These three beginnings were further developed by Lewin's associates and followers in the 1950s, leading to what we have come to know as OD in the foundational period of the 1960s and 70s. In the foundational period, the three beginnings set forth by Lewin were expanded and further modified into a set of underlying values, theories, and practices that outlined what has become known to most people as organization development, or the classical period of organization development. These included several major types of ideas, including the following. Scientific positivism. In other words, a belief that the world was objective and could be investigated, measured and changed using rationality and logic. This was part of action research, but also Lewin's foundation as a social scientist, as well as most of his followers. An interest in social psychological theories are, are in essence, group dynamics based on the primacy of small groups. This, of course, in this period led to teams and team building and a great interest in groups as part of organization development work, small groups that is. Organizations were considered to be open systems and not the mechanistic structures that had been part of the preceding thinking about organizations. A positive view of people and their potential. This built on the humanistic psychology theories that were developed in the 1950s. For example, Maslow. Action research and then later shines innovation on process consultation, looking at how a system operated and consulting to the how and not the what. The notion that change can be planned and the early books in the late 50s and 60s that founded the field were all about the planning of change. And the change was also episodic. There was a beginning, a middle, and an end to change. And so we went from unfreezing movement to refreezing a system. And finally, all of this was based on the early premises of democratic values, positive view of people, uh, the notion of a, uh, intended outcomes that were based on humanistic conceptions of people. This was the dominant form of OD in the 60s and the 70s. However, in the 1980s, we began to get significant branches. These were developed by practitioners innovating in a number of areas and also influenced by the changes in the social sciences that were beginning to come into the field in the 1980s and 1990s. So the roots and the foundations of OD had been established, but now we began to get significant branches. And these included new ideas that, were, that came into the field that shaped practices. One important was social construction as a way of thinking about the world linked to postmodern practices. In other words, we had left the world of objective social science and moved into more subjectivity and the idea that reality was a social construct. This influenced a number of newer approaches, including importantly appreciative inquiry. The move to begin to look at interventions not based on groups of 10 or 12, but at groups of 100, the large group interventions that began to be developed in this time period. Organizations were now conceived not only as open systems, but as meaning-making systems, where the individuals in them created the meaning that was part of what they did. This was tied to social construction. And now they're beginning to, to understand that change needed to be about changing the meaning that people made about the systems. Action research was expanded into a broader notion of action inquiry and engagement, where change could emerge from the act of inquiry alone and not by what was found. Greater numbers of people were involved in the process, and the processes of action inquiry were expanded from action research, which was usually guided by a social scientist in the foundation period. Discursive studies, uh, these began to come in on the linguistic turn in the social sciences and the importance of language as something that, that not only reported reality, but shaped reality, and therefore what people said or how they said it. Changing the conversation began to be a, a notion of how you create a change in systems. Change expanded from being episodic and planned to being the notion of chaotic change, the notion of self-organizing change, the notion that change is continuous. And people began experimenting with processes that no longer thought about refreezing a system so much as guiding the fluid nature of a system. And the fundamental values that guided the field, democracy, humanistic values, continued. But now they were being added to in terms of additional ideas that were related to uh, 
paying attention to environmental impacts, broader social consequences of what organizations did. So we had an expanded set of humanistic, democratic, and value-based values that shaped the field and began to have an impact on what people did. One important dimension of this included that with the expansion of OD into newer contexts, the demographic shifts in North America, the expansion of OD around the world, was the increased attention to cross-cultural and diverse populations in terms of OD practices as well as OD interventions. Thus, diversity and inclusion also became an interest in the 1980s and 90s and a central feature of organization development. Today, we see the blossoming mode of OD. We see a cornucopia of possibilities so rich and so varied that people have lost sight of what the early beginnings were. Uh, what we have today is a field that draws on the many different possibilities. So we have people now who are drawing from the original choices, small groups, action research, and also people drawing on the newer approaches, large groups, social construction. And they are mixing them in a variety of new and innovative ways. And the people who practice this, of course, all believe that what they are doing is the one right way to do things. And uh, I think understanding the context is very important in understanding how to mix and match these choices. And so we have blended approaches and blended ways of doing things. Uh, some people are working in the complexity sciences. And so for them, change is a self-organizing phenomena. Change is a phenomena that is perhaps by changing the conversation as we move along. And they are advocating different ways to approach organizations in that way. People who do appreciative inquiry have expanded it to appreciative inquiry summits where they draw together large groups of people in extended conversations about, about doing inquiry into the positive aspects of systems. These are all ways that these different new trends have been blended and matched and mixed to create a wide range of possibilities for you. However, for myself, I think too many people today have lost sight of the origins and foundations. I think too many people know their branch, but not how it's connected to other branches. So I think if we want to take full advantage of all the blossoms and all our practices that we witness today, I think we need to remember the roots and the three beginnings of Lewin and all the interrelated members of the organization development family. So finally, as you think about what you know about OD and the premises and practices and values that guide your work, I hope you will reflect some on or learn more about how what you are doing in OD has developed over time and where what you are doing or seek to do fits in the full context of the way of OD from its inception more than 70 years ago. Thank you for your time and attention.